uh, today I'm going to define a little bit about the Pearson correlation similarity. So what Pearson correlation similarity says, it is actually, is, uh, it, it will give you a result from minus 1 to 1. Now, how it works? Minus 1 to 1 it gives you a result. Let's say you are having two series and you wanted to see that whether these items are similar or dissimilar or how they behave. So if they, those items are, you know, very much coming out as similar as per the Pearson correlation formula, which we will see in the next slide, then it will tends to give you one. So if it is one means you can say this, okay, these two things are almost similar. Zero means if the, these results are tending to the zero based on the formula, then they are dissimilar. Means there is no match. Uh, we are, we can say that yes, match is there. And if it is going to the minus one side, means it is an opposite relation. Means if one is liking very much for one particular item, other is not liking, or you can say very much disliking that particular thing. So that's how the this Pearson correlation based similarity formula works. Like it, it scales minus one to one. So if you remember last time I have showed the formula, this formula which I'm going to show in a little different. Mathematically, this is the Pearson correlation, uh, Pearson correlation formula, which is like this. Uh, let's say your x and y are the dimensional vectors and then how to calculate let uh, sum up of the x and y preferences which are matching between the x and y users and x and y are all the preferences listed there and that's how this this Pearson behind the scenes will work and tell you that okay this is score is minus one zero or one actually it will not tell you it will tell the user neighborhood and then user from that their recommender system will take care for this to represent the results to you. And uh, if you will see the next, which is, uh, uh, which again define the same thing, let's see, if you remember the left hand side, the uh, uh, data which is there, like one user ID and uh, item ID and the reference value, this we have, this is the one that input file we used in our program. So if you will see this uh, 1 and 5 seem similar because their preference seems to run together. So based on this correlation formula which is given there, if you will try to f calculate these things, then you can find out that okay, how this mathematically also how 1 and 5 are coming up together. Right now because data is very small, we can you know manually also can work that and find out that okay, uh, 1 or 3 are matching or 1 or 4 are matching like this. But in a large data scale, as you know, we have used data sets and all there yeah, manually you cannot do it. You need the mathematical representation for that. Okay. So uh, this this matrix actually, if you will see, uh, it is nothing but for all the user one to five, for item one to three, what are the their preference values are coming. And then last column, which is saying correlation with user one is calculated with that formula. So obviously for a uh, for user to itself this correlation will be one always. And then rest of the correlation will be defined uh, like that uh, formula which we have seen earlier. So this matrix is coming up from that one only. Uh, in between what I was uh, trying to say in this Pearson correlation there is a uh, one obviously there is a one drawback also because let's say uh, for an example let's uh, take this user for use case. It is just taking two items into consideration and it is showing more correlation with user 1 while user 2 is taking three items into consideration but still it is showing 0 0.764 correlation with the user 1. So uh, the drawback is uh, Pearson correlation it doesn't uh, you know take care of how many number of items uh, between two users are uh, considered. So for this, they come up with a weighted correlation thing. So if you will see, there is a again a mathematical if you will see here it will come. So data model with the weighted one. Okay. And uh, uh, we will change this code today also means uh, in a real time we will 
try to change the similarity matrix and then we will see that okay how the things will change if we are changing the similarity but a uh, little bit of doubtful and because uh, data set which we are using it's very small so uh, what I will suggest you is just uh, increase your data set or we can use this uh, third party data sets like uh, group lens or dating site data set and then we can try out different similarity there you will find out huge differences uh, that okay in the uh, in the matrix and all that how the items are recommended because right now for that example purpose our data set is really small okay and uh, coming to this uh, equilibrium uh, similarity uh, as you know uh, it is actually uh, calculate the distance uh, between the two users and then it will try to find out the similarity so if you will see uh, the first column itself it is like distance is calculated as zero because obviously for this particular user distance is zero the same formula in the last time which we use but similarity we will calculate upon the formula using one upon one plus d where d is the distance so that's why this formula first for the first the distance is zero but similarity will come as one upon one plus d means one same way for user 2 distance will be calculated as 3.97 but in the formula it is like 1 upon 1 plus d that's how it will calculate the similarity between the two users so uh, coming back to our own example again I will change this Pearson to this similarity and then see uh, how it will behave so right now currently I will just let me try this what it will show ok so as last time also we saw this thing that for the uh, user 1 it will say item from 0 4 and it will show the reference value that what would be the calculated reference value and let's say I am going to change the similarity now data set is more keep this thing in mind guys um, say use mother. so we'll use this one and then we'll try to find out how it works ok we'll do this no. Okay. If you can see items suggested is still 104 because as I told you it's a very small data set but reference value days if you will remember the last time it was showing somewhere around as I know 4.25 something and now it is showing 4.27 something so little increase in that scenario. Okay and uh, you, you can also try out the different things and uh, uh, but uh, I would recommend try out with a bigger data size so that only you can find out the real difference which has happened. Okay. So coming to this source size as a similarity, one thing is if you will go to the mouth and if you will try to find out this cosine as a similarity, it is not there. So you guys will say that okay if it is not there then why we are discussing? It is actually if you will see mathematically formula it is related to the Pearson only how it is calculated so in the Mahout uh, we will use the Pearson correlation similarity only because it will show you the angle between the two vectors that how based on the angle it will tell you how close these two items are in the cos cosine measure similarity as last time also we saw that it will just show you that okay based on the angle uh, from the between the two uh, vectors but how close these two are. So if you will see in the diagram also the equilibrium distance will cover the distance, direct uh, distance between the vectors, between the coordinate points but here we are just concerned about the angles. So that's why if you will, so don't be surprised if you are not able to find out the cosine is a similarity into the system and in the APIs. Don't think that okay you get some mistake by installing and all, it is not there into the mount side. So, okay, one more, uh, uh, this Tenmoto coefficient, so what Tenmoto does? 
how how it will find out that okay these two uh, users are similar and all. So let's say uh, there are two users and it will take count of that preference which are coming as a common for both the users, user one as user two. So the part of the intersection which is common to that, it will take that intersection divide by total preferences by the users or you can say total uh, preferred item by both the users and based on that number it will find out how closely related these two items are. So if you will just uh, look at this diagram, let's say both, both the users are having the same item in the list, then what will happen? Intersection would be like you know covering all the items, divide by covering obviously all the items are same. So this would be coming as a uh, coefficient will come as a 1. So means those two users are almost similar or same. So that's what this uh, slide also uh, defined to you. So how it is calculated, take a, uh, the intersection power means the preferences which are matching for both the users divide by total preferred items by both the users individually and then the number is called as a tenumoto coefficient. It is actually related with the log likelihood similarity also which last time if you remember uh, we have used in the case where preference values are not there. So, but a log likelihood similarity is little bit related to the statistical part where you know you create your own hypothesis and uh, let's assume you are creating, you wanted to analyze some data. So for that in the statistics there are certain rules before starting how you will see uh, what we do actually we, we will create a hypothesis that okay based on the data we are thinking that uh, let's say our assumption which whatever hypothesis we are making it is not true but there would be counters also let's say let's just for an example I am discussing this thing uh, let's say we are saying that uh, about the syntax and uh, when the Indian government will change uh, and uh, we are based on the data we are saying uh, syntax will go up so here you will have to, to prove that thing you will have to create two hypotheses one would be government will change and syntax will not change and second would be government will change and syntax will change okay so in this case the second one which I said government will change and syntax will change you will call it as a null hypothesis it means whatever I am thinking I am assuming that this hypothesis is going to be true and then second counter hypothesis I will change that okay government will change but syntax can decrease because I am assuming that syntax uh, will increase. So in this scenario it will decrease so that would be my second hypothesis. So based on the data and all I will try to come up with a result that okay which hypothesis is correct. That is a statistical thing. Now how this log likelihood similarity come into picture? It is almost same with the Tenimoto thing only. It will also take care of this intersection part but definition wise it will say how unlikely it is that this two I, uh, these two users are not having this intersection of the preferred items. How unlikely means it will it will just think in a opposite way. So if it is more unlikely means that uh, index would be low, that coefficient would be low. That's what it says. So it's a base, uh, It's similar to the tenimoto coefficient based similarity uh, so right now it is saying uh, here it is saying it is not a part of this explanation here but that's how it is it is it is more the statistical one it will try to find out that okay how unsimilar this is to calculate these things <coughs> so if you have done some statistical course and all there you will find out uh, more about this uh, hypothesis things and all but in the end the long likelihood we will be using in our systems when there is no preference value then long likelihood will try to come with this number and it will generate that how the two users are similar to each other. Okay, nice. <clears throat> now coming to the inferring preferences. So uh, what, the, what it does actually um, so Pearson correlation as I, uh, I think this one I have already a uh, little bit covered already. So Pearson correlation is having this uh, drawback that okay if uh, you know one, two users are sharing the more items and one users are 
two other two are using very small items then it will show it, it, it is not counting that thing that okay how many uh, other two items those two users were sharing and how less other two are sharing sharing and it can still show the same number <coughs> So I would just like to share in this thing. So if you will see, there is something called average preference uh, uh, preference inferior, which will what it will do for the items where this uh, preference values are not given, it will try to come up with an average value for that, and then come up with the Pearson, Pearson correlation simulatory sort of things. So if uh, in your data this preference values are miss missing, it will try to do the everything and to be honest it is it is not a good trick uh, to do because based on the you know previous ratings and you are just averaging and you are just thinking that okay for the new item this could be the preference it is not a good idea but mathematically if you will see for some of the data points uh, you can use this if that uh, data points are very less which are not having the item preferences and others are you know, your, let's say just an example, you are having 10 uh, items and for everyone you are having a preference value, just for one or two it is missing, there it is okay, but in general I would say don't, I, I would not recommend to use this because it's not a good reason. 